Uh, welcome. Um, I'm super happy to be here. So thank you very much for organization of the event uh, for trust on my on my talk. Um, yeah, uh, I will talk about cybersecurity. And probably I will try more less uh, technical, more like in concepts, more like um, what regular users can do when these kind of things happen. So. Um, May I ask uh, who in the room has been hacked already? Please raise the hand. No, not that much. I think it's more more people that says that the that, that the people that is raising hand. So uh, I've been hacked, and that was what the, that was the trigger when I started to learn about uh, cybersecurity in the same way that. Um, uh, uh, Lisa Marie um, says it, is, uh, it happened to me, so I felt in the you know in the curiosity of uh, understanding what happened. So let me introduce myself a little bit more. Uh, I have this cert certification, which is more like a um, international one about uh, cybersecurity uh, management. Also, I've been working as a web security analyst uh, during the last eight years. Uh, at the Godaddy and uh, at Sukuri, you know, Sukuri was ac uh, acquired by Godaddy, and right now I'm working in Patchstack, uh, which is a security brand as well, which is focused in the part of uh, vulnerability research and covering the whole cycle of vulnerability. Right. At this moment, I, I will invite you to to do some yoga with me, something like, wow, breathe in, breathe out, because. I'm going to show you what happened when you um, when you are hacked. At the end, I have been uh, through the last eight years. I have been solving hacking cases, so I seen a lot of things. So it could happen also. It could happen that it's just fake admins appears, like this guy with uh, that very uh, visually image, the admin one, uh, which is our administrator. Or it could happen that, for example, your post. It's the changes, like for example, these two, which is funny because this website was a normal website, and you can see that if you get uh, in the revision, in the revision um, uh, part, if you get uh, uh, back, you can see that it was hacked, and then after that, it was hacked again by other by other guy, right? Uh, you can find that your homepage looks a little bit different. You can find that you get into the drug market suddenly, and people start asking you. So this is a design uh, a design company and free shipping by Ira still. <laughs> or you can find that, for example, your plugins. There are some plugins, strange plugins that uh, um, suddenly appears. Like for example, the login wall something you can. I spot easily those because of the strange name, but also there is one Joom GS. So Joomla here doesn't do anything. Um, as you can see, it uses the Akismet uh, plugin to mimic and to try to pass uh, unnoticed. You can find yourself that uh, your website homepage is this one. You has been suspended. You can find in Google that, for example, uh, you have been blocked. Or you are blocked in the browsers because you are in a uh, blog list. You can find, for example, in Google search that your site had this tag, this super interesting tag. This site might be hacked. Maybe you have ads campaign and then they are disapproved constantly. You can find yourself that your site, when you are loading it, uh, it is asking you for a super easy question and giving away a iPhone or whatever, you can find yourself, this is an, in Spanish, but happens to say in English, that uh, there is a control in the beginning uh, that you are not a robot allowing notification in your browser, which is super bad. Never. Always click on block. You can find yourself that you suffer a ransomware attack and you have to pay to recover your information. This is in Spanish, but what they're saying is basically that you are incoming 
uh, 50,000 euros or 100,000 euros per year, but if you get a hack, you have to pay a fine that is triple, something like uh, 300,000. So the fine also is interesting. When you get hack, it's not also the importance of the hack and their uh, reputation uh, problem. It's also that you can get fined by uh, um, authorities, like for example, GDPRs and so on. And at the end, you know, uh, starting to to um, to learn about this kind of uh, you know words, hacker and so on. And you might happen to find yourself that the police break into your home, into your home. And this is true. It happened to a friend of me, and it was just because his computer got hacked and was used as a platform for attacking other sites. So, yeah, at this point is when you are like a little bit stressed and you are a little bit afraid of this, and that's in the moment when you need to say, hey, breath in, breath out, because this is the point when you realize that your site has been hacked, when all of this comes to your mind, especially the, uh, uh, the things like fines, like the reputation damage, and so on, right? So I know. Uh, after that, it's, it's okay for screaming, it's okay for feeling down. So after that moment, let's act. And uh, through the acts, you can feel uh, that you are doing something towards your uh, recovery, right? Unfortunately, since uh, cybersecurity is a little bit a tough subject, I need some concepts to, to mention. I will omit those that uh, uh, my previous uh, mate has mentioned in the um, in her lighting talk, which is very nice. Um, but I will try to be a little bit more abstract, right? So, what is security infor or information security, right? As you can see here, this is the ABC of the information security. You can see information in the middle, and you can see that it has like three uh, edge of the triangle, right? You have the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. This is what we talk in cybersecurity, the CI triad. Those are the things we work. Those that we, we, we work in, um, in cybersecurity, we have to work of this, which means the right information for the right person in the right moment, right? On, per contrary, you have the that triad, which is the uh, what happens in the opposite, right? For the confidentiality, you have the disclosure. For the integrity, you have the alteration. And for the availability, you have the destruction of the information. You can see that the information is in the middle. You have a triangle. And then you have phases. You know, it can comes from communication, from hardware, or from software, all the threats. And surrounding it, you have other security lawyers like security physical, personal, and organization. This slide is a little bit off topic, but it's interesting because people are afraid of uh, what I can do uh, when I have done everything right in my website, what I can do to avoid fines or to avoid issues with the legal things. And it's what we call due diligence to carry out two important things. What means you have to demonstrate that you have taken care and you have been uh, diligent, which is the in the United States is called the prudent man uh, um, rule, right? Which is something like what a prudent man would do in this case, right? So if you do something to care about the security of your website, log it. Okay, so if you log it and you have even even you have uh, find yourself in a cybersecurity event, uh, you can face a fine or you can face a legal issue showing that you have been uh, diligent and you have to care. Okay, so it's it, this is very important. Don't take uh, measures in silence. Log them, write somewhere an email or whatever, but you have to log them. Um, this is also interesting. I always put in my presentation. There, this guy, uh, probably is a company that never, no one in this uh, uh, in this room knows. You know, Cisco. Uh, this guy said one, in one of the economic forums uh, uh, 
events, something like this. No? Right? There are two types of companies that has been hacked and those that still or they don't know yet that they has been hacked. Okay? So it um, illustrates very much how we feel in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this part, right? In the cybersecurity part. But in the user part, I know that you feel like this. You want to use internet, but <laughs> you have to take care of a lot of things. Okay, so let me just make a brief comment about uh, hackers and cyber terrorists. I would like to always to, to mention that hackers are not bad, okay? Hacker is a person a curious person who goes beyond limits and conventions. Probably works, uh, probably the world goes uh, uh, forward because of this kind of, uh, of persons in the world. What is a cyber terrorist? Is a cyber, uh, cyber terrorist or a terrorist or uh, a cracker, which also is a name and the name we use. It's a computer hacker, which is aligned to enrich himself. The zero sum game is, is also is something like it says that what you, I gain is what you lose. You lose something, I gain that something. So this is the bad sign, the bad guy. So security itself is not like uh, you don't have a, bull, a silver bullet for for cyber security. Okay, so it's compounded by layers, and you have to be always always working on them. This is the weakest part, the user. Not, 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 not only the admin, but also the users that use your, your application and so on. Then it's the device you use, then it's the connection, then it's the traffic directly into your website, then it's the credential to access to the admin part, then it's the security itself of your web. There is the server when it's landing this, uh, this and the database. And the protection against that is knowledge in the beginning, then Antivirus, SSL, WAF, uh, strong passwords, monitor. This more or less has been named before. But it's important, the last one. It's not once-time uh, measure. You have to maintain. You have to keep ruling this, this list all the time. How a WordPress site is infected? So it started with a vulnerability. It doesn't happen because it is in the air, OK? There is a vulnerability. There is someone that exploits that vulnerability, and there is an injection. Something. I don't know what, but something. That could be final code, spam. I get a spam in your website, or I get, I put, uh, I don't know, a deface uh, front page in the site. Or I can put a backdoor in the worst scenario, and then having a backdoor, I can regain access to your website even if you plug the uh, vulnerability. OK? Ooh. Sorry. Some facts, and one of them was named before as well. Site hacking almost never is client oriented. I mean, I don't care if you have a website for taking care of kids or donations or pet food or whatever. They don't care. Okay? So they just see your website as a platform, as a, a boat node or, or whatever. So they they don't care what is your website about. It happens because when you get hacked, the first uh, thought that comes to your mind is, why me? My website is not even, it's not even uh, known. It's, it's not uh, in, the, in the top 10. And why me? And I'm I, I doing right for the humanity. Yeah, that happens. It almost happens because it's, there is a, a deficient monitoring and maintenance. SSL is not an anti-hacking shield, and this is something I have added because some people are, I, um, reach me saying, hey, I have an SSL certificate. Why have been hacked? And I say, okay, SSL certificate which secure the, the communication from user to the server. If there is a hacker or there is a bad guy hacking your website using the same connection, it will be doing securely, okay? <laughs> That, that's the point. The, the point of having access to a certificate is to avoid that if you transmit information or sensitive information from your device to the, to the server, it, has, uh, it, it is protected. So nobody can uh, read it in the, mean, in the way, OK? In the path. Maybe in the server, but not in the path. That's the only thing with the SSL. Patch and security updates appears always after hacking exploits appears in the market. 
And this is very important. We are all of us, we are human beings. And there is a Latin uh, saying, I don't know if you know it, radio manum est, which, in, which means the human being fails. And nobody, no, 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 it doesn't matter if you trust in the best uh, security company. This is conformed by humans and this happens. And this is the, only, the other fact that is very important for all of you. Security never and nor will be is 100% effective. Okay, so coming back to the topic, there is some agents involved when something bad happens. Uh, you, as an owner, admin, developer, designer, uh, and you have to take care about the GDPRs and something like that. And there is a other layer, which is the hosting provider, which has agents, support, backups, and so on. And then you have the security experts or the external teams. Normally, it's external. Some hosting has an internal team for that. So um, this is for your uh, mental health as well. So when you are a user, this is your accountability. So something that happens in your device is your responsibility. Something that happens from your device until, your, until the website you are visiting is businesses and accountability. And the website security is site owner accountability, which means each of those uh, agents has a responsibility if there is a hack. And you have to be or due diligence and be care, uh, care about this and demonstrate that you are not the, the, the problem here. So you have a site, you have this separation. What happens below the terrain uh, layer is uh, hosting provider accountability or liability if we are talking about legal things. And what happens upper is yours as a builder. Uh, keep in mind the OWASP, uh, the OWASP uh, website is interesting to you uh, to check. I don't know how, how many technical guys are here. I mean, how many people that doesn't know anything about security are here in the, in the room. All of you knows about the security. So all of you knows the OWASP project, right? Well, I recommend to you not only to check uh, regularly this, uh, um, this is, uh, website, but also to recommend to the people, um, uh, to users to check this because there are some tutorials and so on to understand how security works. Okay. Normal targets in WordPress uh, in a WordPress site: users, user database, the database itself, the content, the infrastructure, which uh, we have uh, talked before. We can use a website as a platform to attack others. Payment system: if you are a WooCommerce or you are a e-commerce uh, website, uh, is very classic uh, attack to change. If you are, for example, using PayPal. Uh, to change the PayPal uh, account to pay to <laughs> in their website. So you can find yourself that the, uh, your customers are paying, but they're not paying to your account. And something that is very also is a, um, very interesting is the reputation. We will talk about this later. So in cybersecurity, we, always, we have like eight kinds of uh, measures, but th these two are the most important. There are two measures, two, two ways of uh, acting uh, towards security. One is reactive, when something bad happened, already happened. So you are working towards pain mitigation, is what we call incident response. And there is a proactive uh, set of actions that is when something still haven't happened. So it's a risk mitigation, it's not uh, securing your website is minimizing the risk of being hacked. Minimizing, which is not zero, okay? Okay, so let's go into the main part of the topic. Incident response, what happens when you get a uh, hack? So incident response is the effort quickly to identify, minimize, and contain the damage and remediate uh, the cause for future incidents. So this is the list of the things you should do as a technical person, as a user, not as a security analyst, okay? As a security analyst are more tough. First, scan the site. The, let's realize what happened, right? I will get into the, the those uh, matters uh, 
right now. Then update. I recommend updating, and I recommend updating for a circuit thing that WordPress have, and it's very interesting. I will mention before uh, after. So the CRC, the check and remove and change, is just check around and take actions. Okay. And as a final action, restore a backup. I will take. I will uh, also mention about backups. Uh, following this. So the first, scan your site. Let's figure out what happened. I recommend, the, you know, uh, websites has this uh, separation. You have the client side and you have the server side. I recommend to always separate because the scanners, the malware scanners, the whatever scanners you put into are separated in those, in those types, the client's one and the server's one, okay? So for the client side, I recommend the site checksecurity.net. It's free, it's just you put there the domain and it takes a snapshot of your website, how it's uh, loading through a lot of agents. I mean, if you use Chrome, you use Firefox, if you use, uh, uh, if you, the, your agent is coming from Google, if you're coming from Bing and so on, and analyze the result, the result towards uh, some heuristic uh, rules and say if it, there is something strange. Doesn't mean that this is in green mode, that your website is clean, no. I mean, maybe your infection is not in the front end or is not visible for users, okay? So, but it's at least it's one part of the uh, scanning. You can use VirusTotal to check if there is any blocks, uh, block list out there that identify any malware in your website. So this is uh, helpful, this is very helpful. It's, you know, it's a bad situation when you get into a block list but uh, having in a blog list uh, gives you more information of what happened, right? Okay, so VirusTotal will help with this. With this, any free tier plugin that you might use in your in your in your site, like for example iThemes or WordPress or any other, will be also interesting. There is a conversation that happens I don't know two months ago or something like that about trustfulness of inside uh, scanners. We always say that is, they are not very trustful because what we normally, what a, a bad guy normally does when he's hacking a website is to tamper the scanners, okay? So being in the website, you can tamper it. So it's better if you have an external scanner. The best you can do is you have external scanners or you have a server, a server a antivirus. And even better, if you have something that is called integrity scanner, and normally people doesn't know about it. Integrity scanner is a, a little a scanner will be give to you information of each change, every change that happened in your website, in every uh, single file. So it could be a little bit noisy, but it helps a lot to identify fast and to backtrack what happened, okay? So having an integrity scanning for me is a must in each website. Uh, for example, this is a site check uh, scanner. As you can see, it is detecting that there is a malware found. And in this case, it's a, uh, I don't know if you'll read it, but it's raw ads. So you have uh, ads in your website that are not, um, are not wanted. This is a file integrity scanner. As you can see, there is a lot of URLs, there is a lot of uh, uh, file names, and those file names, when they have changed, okay? You can, che you can check all of them, okay? So mark them read, okay? Also, if you have a website, uh, a WordPress website, or you are administrating a website, please check the plugins folder and the themes folders right now. If you have any of these, you have been hacked. If in the BP content plugins, you have a plugins folder, or plugin plugin, uh, or a BP zip, or a task controller, core stop, core engine, BP for lazy load, you have been hacked. If you find that you have a theme, a theme installed, like CEO theme, classic, or themes, you have been hacked. Okay, thank you. Um, car plugin also is another one. As uh, you can see here, it's a car plugin, uh, what is the content of the core plugin? Plugin. There is not a core plugin. Okay, it's just a, a hacker. So what? Um, how WordPress bootstrap? This is important. Once we have 
being we have scanned the website, we have to understand how uh, WordPress bootstrap. So it gets into the web servers uh, first, right? So you use Apache, Nginx, or whatever. So there is rules there. You can get hacked into, the, into the, that level. So sometimes it's not your web, WordPress site. After that, it gets into the, the folder and checks the htaccess file. So one of the first files you have to check is the htaccess. OK? There, sometimes you will have, you find uh, the initial of the infection, or at least what is making it to reproduce itself. You then have to move to the user ini and PHP ini. And then after that, index.php and BP block header. From there, there is a mess. But at least this is the first step you have, uh, the first levels and files you have to check in a hack WordPress. The second, update all, update all. We always mention this. And I know that uh, operations guys always say, no, but if we update, we can get uh, down our website because of compatibility and so on. Yes, but that's less damage than if you get hacked, OK? It's interesting because of the last part. If you update your plugins, your themes, or your core uh, engine, like the, the WordPress one, you overwrite compromised or corrupted code itself because you don't load it from a trustful um, official repository, OK? So this side effect is the one I normally recommend to people that is not a cybersecurity specialist. I update everything, OK? So one of the secrets of a security analyst to uh, clean a website, download the WordPress uh, from the WordPress.org. Then remove those uh, folders, bbcontent and bbconfig. And then the rest, just put in your website and overwrite everything there, OK? Doing this, at least you know that the um, infection might have only in the BB config and the BB content on any other file that is not core. Doing this, you smash a lot of uh, infected files. And the last uh, recommendation, check and remove. And we, this is just pretty common sense, right? And needed admin users. As uh, my mate uh, mentioned, the more plugins and themes you have, the more teams you are trusting in, which is important to have in mind. So you are trusting in all those teams, in all those humans that they, they are doing properly. Update the backups, remove them, and so on. Dev test sites are also, also one of the most typical uh, point of infection. You can see here the, the admin that should be removed. And also all the uh, updates that are not being updated in this case, for example, are default th themes. It's pretty common the people to collect default themes. It's something like, hey, I have the themes from the version 4 all the, in the installing my website. Yeah, all of them are now point for attacking. <laughs> so it's nice, but uh, I don't recommend it. Last option, restore a backup. What happened with backup? The same of this film. No, is somebody in the room that hasn't uh, watched this TV, this uh, film? No, no, all of, all of you, right? What happened in this film? You get back, you modify something, but you don't know if you have been modified in the right point, in the right moment, and what happened, uh, and the, the information you lose in the mid time, OK? So it's, infor it's important that um, you consider those factors. The, mo the most important part in this one is that you have a backup, OK, but this is functional. Happens a lot. OK, I have a backup. Share it to me. It's corrupted. It's not only having a backup. It's also checking that it works. So remember, those are what you have to do for cleaning a website that it has been hacked. And the last part, the reputation. This is very easy. Uh, Internet is constantly crawling by bots. This is something we know. Search engines, mostly all of them, has blog list, and the blog list is very engaged with the reputation. Reputation is totally linked with the blog list of uh, those uh, famous vendors out there, like Google, Bing, and so on. The more famous a blog list are, the most accepted in uh, places like uh, social networks and so on. 
keep in mind one thing. If you are in a block list, it's because your website has been hacked since time. Okay, it's it's get time to get into a block list. It's not immediately. The list also takes time. They normally doesn't share why you are in a block list, so don't don't expect information. Uh, yeah, ads campaigns and so on also checks for this. Uh, yeah, uh, keep in mind that the search engines can remove your CEO if you uh, if you get hacked. So if you are CEO experts, keep in mind that this is very important. The last thing, important thing, according with the data protection laws, it could be mandatory to report if you get hacked. In the case of the GDPR, you have 72 hours to, uh, to make uh, the authorities know about this breach, okay? So if there is any sensitive information lost in a leak, if you don't, uh, um public this then you are uh, you you will find you will be fine for sure okay so just let check in the virus total when you get into the block list check in virus total they have a, a huge uh, database of uh, block lists out there so just check there and submit for each of them individually when you know that your website is clean. If you do do, do before, you get again into the block list and you, they will delay a little bit more to the list in the in the to the list from the block list. Last thing, I recommend to do a postmortem report. It's hard because uh, exposes your management, but also um, helps you to learn, but also shows that you. Uh, our commitment with uh, transparency, okay? Proactive measure, more or less, is what uh, my mate has mentioned before. My uh, my best, uh, my tool most important that has to be in a, in a website is the integrity scanner and the WAF, but it's, it's nothing that they use should survive with them, but it's, those are the most effective, and that's all. You can read in the in the slides. So remember to invest in hosting and in security from the beginning. It's nothing that you have to know. There is no security free. Uh, this, there is no free security out there that works. Okay. If you need security, you have to invest on it. And that's all. Everybody needs to hack it. It's like uh, the phrase I always try to finish with. Uh, so kitos. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you have questions, you can find me around or here if, if there is en enough time still. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you.